As you may remember, New England played a key role in the history of this country. The native people, English settlers, founding fathers and mothers, and children of God from around the world who found a home here have all, in their own ways, written themselves into the story of this nation. As I prepare to address you, I thought how looking for the Lord's hand in the early history of the United States might help us recognize His hand in our own lives, no matter when or what country we call home. Speaking of the pilgrims, the ocean voyage across the Atlantic took 66 days before the pilgrims literally, quote, ones who came from afar, unquote, arrived off the coast of New England on November 11th, 1620. During that historic voyage, the crew and passengers of the Mayflower encountered many turbulent storms. In the middle of one storm, young John fell overboard. By all accounts, that should have been the end of John Howland. However, the Lord had other plans for him. William Bradford, also a passenger on the Mayflower, reported, In these storms, the winds were so fierce and the seas so high, the pilgrims were forced to remain below deck. And one of them, John Howland, came above, and with the roll of the ship, he was thrown into the sea. But it pleased God that he caught hold of a rope that was trailing in the water, and held on, though he were several fathoms under water, till he was hauled up by the same rope to the brim of the water, and then, with a boat hook and other means, got him into the ship again, and his life was saved. And though he was something ill with it, yet he lived many years after, and became a profitable member both in church and commonwealth. While the Mayflower finally arrived in the New World, they discovered they were more than 250 miles north of their intended location. Because of the lateness of the season and lack of supplies, they decided to stay there. When they explored their new home, they found land already cleared, corn supplies, and an abandoned village whose inhabitants had died in the disease epidemic of 1616 to 1618. Later, a leader of one of the villages arrived in the struggling settlement to help the pilgrims. They formed an alliance, and during the second fall after their arrival in the New World, 52 colonists and some 90 natives celebrated Plymouth's first successful harvest, the Thanksgiving in Plymouth. At the time, John Howland was not as famous as fellow passengers William Bradford, John Carver, and Miles Standish. However, standing where we now stand, with nearly 400 years between us and these courageous pilgrims, he may have had a greater impact on the history of the United States than any of them. About four years after they arrived in the New World, John married fellow Mayflower passenger Elizabeth Tilly, a brave and committed daughter of God. They eventually had 10 children and nearly 90 grandchildren, but that is not where the story ends. Today, an estimated 2 million Americans trace their roots to John and Elizabeth. Their descendants include three U.S. presidents, Franklin D. Roosevelt, George H. W. Bush, and George W. Bush, American poets Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and two influential 19th century American religious leaders, the prophet Joseph and his brother Hiram Smith. Think about it for a moment. The existence of these political leaders, poets, and prophets hinge on this one young man finding and grabbing a rope in the ocean and holding on tight to be saved. It was a miracle. I see the hand of the Lord in John Howland's life. I stood in reverence at his headstone next to William Bradford's at the burial hill in Plymouth. The headstone has a picture of the Mayflower and reads, here ended the pilgrimage of John Howland, who died February 23rd, 1673, aged above 80 years. He married Elizabeth, daughter of John Tilly, who came with him in the Mayflower, December 1620. From them are descended a numerous posterity. He was a godly man and an ancient professor in the ways of Christ. He was one of the first comers into this land and was the last man that was left of those that came over in the ship called the Mayflower that lived in Plymouth. Brothers and sisters, please look for the Lord's hand in your lives and in the lives of your family, as I do in the lives of my ancestors and family. Expect it. Do not dismiss it. 
Do not relegate the experiences in your lives to coincidences. As you see the hand of the Lord in your lives, thank Him for it. Please record and share your stories. The more you recognize the Lord's hand in your lives, the more you will see it in your lives today.